Hello all, welcome to another quick learning. Today I'm going back to the code signal SQL coding exercises. Um, if you're joining this in the middle of the playlist, I'll put a link down below so you can get started at the beginning if you wish. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to the arcade uh, databases. Just waiting for it to load, okay. And then we left off at number 27 here. Uh, combination lock. All right, so you return from vacation with a huge suitcase full of presents. Unfortunately, you forgot the correct combination for the, the combination lock on the bag, and now you have to try all of them until you find the correct one. If you're curious about how many possible combinations the lock has, the combination lock consists of several rotating disks where each disk has its own set of possible characters. You have a table disk which stores the information about these disks and has the following structure. ID, the unique ID of the disk, so that's just uh, a primary key. Uh, the characters, a list of characters the disk has, the characters are guaranteed to be unique. And then color, the color of the disk, which uh, is not going to matter for this. Calculate the total number of possible combinations that the lock has and return it as a table that has only one column combinations in one row. So if you don't know what they're talking about, basically, uh, if you've ever seen like a bike lock where it has numbers on it, and you have to do like three or four numbers, and then it'll open the lock. So what they're saying is these characters, it could be a C, it could be an O, a D, or an E um, on one of the disks, and then on the other disk it be, could be an F, I, G, H, T, or S and you have to put together uh, a combination of these two to unlock it. So they're asking how many combinations of this one disk code and one disk fights that you could possibly have. So how many combinations would you have to go through potentially to get the right combination? So to figure that out, the set of possible characters for the first disk is equal to four, because there's four characters. And the set for pop, the set for the second disk is six because there's six characters. So the total number of combinations is just the multiplication between the two. And so this is actually kind of a hard question, um, and I actually had to look up the solutions, and I'll explain to you why the solution works. So you can see it's it's a bunch of different functions kind of nested together. So you're looking at the length of the characters here. So we're pulling out uh, the four here and the six here because there's six characters here and four here. And then we're taking the logarithm. This is the natural logarithm. Um, and then the sum of those and then the exponential. So I don't have a scientific calculator on here so I'm just gonna use a Python to show you what's happening. I have to import uh, the math function. So, what's happening is, so for this first example, what we're doing is we're doing math, and then we're doing log of 4, and then adding to that math log of 6. So you can see that's this portion of it here. So the sum and the log, so it's taking the logs and then it's summing over all the rows for those lengths. And that gives you an answer, and actually oh, I will set that equal to something. Okay, so this value here, this 3.17 blah blah blah, is now stored in the value. And we're going to take the exponential of that. So basically, uh, we're taking the log, and then we're kind of undoing the log so that we can multiply all these lengths together. So what it's doing is it's taking math dot exp, so this is taking e to the power of, um, and then we want value. And you can see, uh, because of the, the rounding of the floats, it's giving a very close number to 24, but it's a slightly less than 24. That's why we're using the round function here. So that's what's happening. You're doing the log and then you're undoing basically the log with the exponential and that leaves you with like 4 times 6 
or yeah, let's go ahead and run this and we'll get some other examples as well. And let's see the second case. We got 4 times 6 times 4 times 6. So it'd be 24 times 24, which should be equal to what they're getting, 576. Yeah, so they're saying 576 should be the answer. So all it's doing is looking at all these links and multiplying them together with some uh, kind of fancy math of doing uh, the logarithm and then undoing the logarithm with exponential after it's been summed. And the reason you have to do this is because there's no good multiplication function. Uh, the sum doesn't do what you want. If instead there was a you know multiplication function that was length sum but multiplied all the different rows together, then you could just use that function. So that's how I did it. Um, there's some other solutions here. Uh, so let's go to the one of the top ones here. So yeah, so for this one, they do it a little bit differently. So they set up a session variable. That's what the at means. Uh, and they set it equal to that session variable times length of the characters. And then each time they're setting it equal to one, so it's just equal to the length. And that's just multiplying it together. So each time it's multiplying by the length. Okay. And this is the same as the one I showed you. Uh, this is just the same, it's just a slightly different format. Um, this one, they're declaring some variables here, and then you can see eventually they're just uh, multiplying each row by, by each row. So it'd be 4 and then times 6, and then that result 24 times 4, and then that result times 6 basically what they're doing. There's just some uh, fancier stuff that says the total is null, then, then forget it. All right. All right, so that was a little bit more complicated one. Um, it's labeled as easy, but I would say it, it wasn't that easy. But I hope you guys were able to follow along and hope you got unstuck from that one if you were stuck on that. Alrighty guys, hope you join me for some later videos. Thank you very much.